Wow, that's hot. Ooh, God, that's extremely hot this morning. Good morning, friends. Mark Holmes here, and as always, thank you guys for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Blue Sports Report. Without you guys, it does not work without you guys. So, um, I'd say the sun came up today, but I can't see it. I know it's there. It's kind of cloudy and rainy and stuff, and, you know, I've been working on some barbecue. Trying to keep busy, you know, for a couple of reasons. You know, I do a pork shoulder, or two pork shoulders. Um, I can pull the pork and things like that. I can have some for like some cold pork sandwiches or just pulled pork, you know, with some uh, coleslaw or pulled pork tacos. And I can put some in the freezer. It's inexpensive, it's easy, and it definitely gives us something to do to pass the time. And if it ends up being that we're all in lockdown and I've got friends that can't get food, well, this is a great way to feed a lot of people inexpensively. So I put this on about 12 hours last night ago last night and currently I'm at 155 and 162 on the two port shoulders and um, I need to change the the ash in there so let, 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 let's take a look real quick while let, let, I'll give you guys a taste just a taste just a taste okay can, can you see in there okay this is what it looks like after 12 hours you know, the first 150 degrees is pretty easy. It lasts about 30 degrees. Seems like it takes forever. So let, let me dump the pan real quick because I'm going to put some fresh ashes. I know you anti-propane people, you know, you're cussing me out right now. But I put charcoal and, and wood chips in here last night, and this is still... Still a little bit in there, but we're gonna make it fresh. Hey, slippery out here. So, the Dallas Cowboys, our guys, our guys right now. A lot of people are like, man, we lost Byron Jones, we lost Robert Quinn, you know, it's because of Dak Prescott, you know, if we didn't pay that guy, we could have gotten some great players, or we could have held on to those guys. Um, I'm going to say this, it sucks losing players, you know, you never want to lose players, I get that, but it's a necessary evil, I'm going to ask you, did, when New England lost Trey Flowers last year? Trey Flowers. Did they seem to lose a step? Did, I mean, that defense, I think, was still number one in the NFL, if I'm right about that. And I remember I remember 2013 when we had Jason Hatcher, who had a season much like Robert Quinn. Jason Hatcher, a guy who had never had more than three or four sacks a season, had 11, and he got paid and went to Washington and didn't bust great. We had DeMarcus Ware, who had had a kind of a little bit down a year for him. You know, they said, we can't make it without him, and we lost him. Sean Lee, Sean Lee got hurt. So we lost three, three starters on our defense. That was 32nd. You know what the amazing thing is? That defense actually got better. Because you think of names. Because they've done something already. There's going to be a lot of guys that don't have a name for themselves that are going to be making a name for themselves. And if we're about just superstars, all team, uh, all stars, then New England would never win a Super Bowl. New England usually has some of the least amount of Pro Bowl players every year. Seriously. It's about having a lot of capable guys. See, Jason Witten is a name you know. Jason Witten is a guy we've seen do great things over the years. But guys get old. And you look at him now, still a stand-up guy, still a leader on the team. But you look at the capabilities in comparison to, say, a Zach Ertz. 
sorry, it's not there. Like uh, Travis uh, Kelsey, not the same kind of player anymore. And you have to let guys like Blake Jarwin and find out if he can be one of those top tier um, tight ends or if you need to get somebody else. And see, the thing about football is no matter how good you have been, it's constantly evolving and other players become really, really good. And it's like the evolution. It's Darwinism. I don't know how else to put it, but it's the natural order of things. The one thing you have to say about the Cowboys, the one good thing you must say, is they have been really good at evaluating talent. They have found guys that other people have just said, no, thank you. Seriously. Now, you can look at the last two drafts and say, well, you know, we did get Taco and Tristan Hill as our top picks, and, um, you know, we didn't do exactly exceptionally well with those guys. And I'll give you that, but the majority of the talent that the Dallas Cowboys have gotten is homegrown talent. Will McClay changed the Dallas Cowboys' whole drafting situation. We used to have Jerry Jones moving up and back and forth and sideways and everything else and reaching for players. And it showed on our team, because you look at a team, I think it was 2019, that we literally, within three years, not a single player in that draft was even in the NFL. Not on our roster, in the NFL. And you can't have things like that. But the Cowboys have gone away from what's been deemed the hot pick, the sexy pick, you know, the can't-miss player, and finding ones that other people kind of say, no, that's not the guy. Every year we listen to, you know, the Mel Kuypers and the Todd Maches and all these guys that tell you that this guy is great, this guy is a can't-miss player and things like that, only to find out they missed on him. So this is one of the ones, I don't want to say trust the process, but understand I got people like, you know, because we're paying Dak, you know, we lost six starters. Well, yeah, we've lost some guys. We've lost some guys. Robert Quinn, that is a beast, okay? I will give you that. But you don't know how many more years he's going to play at that level. You don't. He may. He may not. You know, he had been going downhill. He's in that contract year. Boom. You can't afford to pay him that much. Not as, not as what you're paying D-Law that much on the other side. You just can't. I'm happy for him because that brings us a compensatory pick, which is going to help us down the road. Um, Randall Cobb did a fantastic job for us. That's going to be one that will be a little harder to replace. But you can replace that guy, but you didn't lose the cornerstones. We lost to Cam Fleming. Cam Fleming did start for us for a few games. Cam Fleming did start a course for a few games. He did okay. I'm not going to say he played lights out. But you drafted a guy like Connor McGovern that's in there. You know, you kept a Joe Loon, which are, to me, the key pieces. You kept the key pieces on the offense. You really have to look at saying, i got to replace, well, we need another tight end, number two tight end, and we need a slot receiver. It's pretty good on the offense. On the defense, well, I lost with those guys. I looked at that and said, yeah, we, we had some had some guys in defense that played well. You know, Byron Jones played well. Didn't get turnovers. Robert Quinn played well. Didn't stop the run. You know, Jeff Heath, he was okay. So it's not the end of the world there, I think, with what we lost. And right now, as we sit here, we still have money. You know, we did end up bringing in uh, Gerald McCoy. Gerald McCoy is a good player. Gerald McCoy is a really good player. So, you know, you can almost say that that might be apples to apples losing Robert Quinn. Um, we did bring back Anthony Brown. You know, I'm not saying that he's Byron Jones, but he's affordable. Uh, you still have some money if you decide you want to get somebody. So we're not in the worst position in the world. We're really not. I'm not going to say that we're a better team now because we lost those guys, but the Cowboys did some things last year that ended up being 
really good. Cowboys ended up doing some things that were really good last year. Um, and hopefully we can do those same things and add to the guys that we have. So, I'm not too upset. Certainly not going to be real upset because we gonna have pulled pork. <laughs> yeah. So hopefully you guys are making it through. Try to keep this up dry. Making it through the coronavirus right now. Um, we're going to be working in overtime here at the Joe Boo Sports Report. Uh, we'll keep you up to speed on everything is the Dallas Cowboys and things I'm doing to keep from going crazy. Been working on cleaning out the fish pond, cleaning out the outdoor kitchen. Hmm. I got a faucet over here to change, and I got to fix one in the house. I need to do some work in the workshop. And that man cave downstairs, I have so many great things that you the fans have been sending me. I just am over, overwhelmed at looking at all the stuff on the walls and stuff. It's like, yeah, where do I start? And what do I, what do I move? What do I get rid of? What, what do I do? What do I, what does a brother do? You know, that, that's a beautiful thing right there. In the morning, knowing you got about 30 pounds of meat in there. Look at that smoke. Smoke it away. Mm. Mm, 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 mm. Drinking my coffee and talking to my friends. It don't get any better than this, y'all. All right. I'm going to go turn on the TV, catch up on the latest news in the world and in sports. Everybody, be safe out there. Try to stay away from everybody. And... Uh, Let's stay away from the corona.